So good morning, welcome, thank you for joining this class. Uh, my name is Videmi Makmodi. This is discipleship class, and this is the Ikeja class where we are studying Genesis chapter 2 at the moment. Today we are looking at Genesis chapter 2, um, part 3. And part 3 will run from chapters, uh, verse 7 to I don't know where. Hopefully till the end, even though that's unlikely. But we'll see how it goes. We spent one month on Genesis chapter 1, and it looks like we're going to spend one month on Genesis chapter 2 as well. Please invite your friends, invite your brothers, invite everyone to come in. It's going to be a fantastic day in the sight of God. God bless you and thank you for joining the class. Last week we looked at the, the philosophy or the technology of rest. And I said that every child of God, that God, that God walked before he rested. But when he came to us, what God expects from us is that we rest before he walks, before we walk. That everything that he will commit into our hands to do for him, everything that is work for us to do for God, must take off from the foundation of rest. And that until a man is rested in his spirit, he can not give the best of himself. Because he will constantly be distracted by the things that are around him, that are broken down. So we talked a lot about rest. And this morning... Part of what we were sharing before, uh, before we came live is that one of my sisters highlighted the fact that God blessed the seventh day, which was the day he rested. And that it dawned on her that that day was blessed not because it was what we call Saturday or Sunday, but it was blessed because that was the day God rested. And in going through it, we concluded that that is why we must start from rest. Because if we start from rest, then every single day of our lives, we leave it in rest, which means that every single day of our life manifests the blessing in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, and God bless them. So we are meant to take off from the foundation of rest. That was what we talked about last week. If you'd like to um, follow that class from last week, you can go back to my page um, from last week Friday, and then you will see the entire teaching on the philosophy or the technology of rest. Today we want to look at streams of income and work that god did not cause the rain to fall on the earth in verse 5 of genesis chapter 2 because there was not a man to till the land and we talked a lot about work in that breath we said that a man god prepares his man before he releases him to work so i didn't say this last week but let me just say that thing that we hear in motivational speaking fake it until you get it is a lie from the pit of hell no you don't fake it you get trained so that you can get it because every time you get in the room and you are faking it i promise you half of the room may not know that you are faking it the other half will know and every every party on the on the different sides of the divide we form an opinion about you so if i come into a room and you are teaching on a subject i'll give you a story in 2008 i went for a conference it was my first time in that kind of conference and the person who was teaching was teaching on the alabaster box and i had just done a series of teachings i think like three a series of three teachings on the alabaster box which you know by virtue of that time i am sure if i taught it now I'll probably doing it in like in a 24 series but i did it in three series and at that point in my mind for my growth everything that needed to be known about the alabaster box i knew but I showed up at this conference that we paid money then, huge sum of money to register for. And the speaker was talking on the alabaster box. I'm sorry, and it's not pride. And I sat there and I said, Lord, you brought me from other journey. Come and listen to this. And I'm not proud to say it, but that's the way it works. From that day, I formed an opinion about this person. And it's just difficult. To hear them speak for me because my first interaction with them they didn't wow me like I had heard that they had the capacity to wow do you understand it so when you enter a room and you've not been prepared or you have not submitted to be prepared and you say I will fake it till I get it there is always one two three four people who can help move your life forward in that room who can tell that you are faking it I have taught Genesis 
this is my third tranche of teaching Genesis. But I still prepare before I come, every class. You know why? Because these people are different. And that would mean that somebody may ask a question from left of field. And I must be ready to answer. Part of preparation in the philosophy of work is you don't only master what you know that you require right now, you master what your audience and the people around you might require that even though you don't need, you need to be able to convince them to say they don't need. Do you understand it? So when we get into this thing that we're doing, these half-baked things that we come out and we say, have, why do you think that when someone goes to seven years of medical school, they still take them through a year of housemanship? Why do you think that happened? Because that's the day they want to prove that your seven years of preparation is key. So you are not called a doctor until you go through that one year and you are certified in whatever areas that you had trained in to say, okay, this one will not be living scissors inside of people in surgery. Do you understand it? If those things that matter like being a doctor, being a lawyer, you can't fake it. Why do we think that we, in the kingdom of God we can fake it? That was last week. Let's move on to this week. Because this week I want to move forward. So we're going to start from verse 7. And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground. And he breathed into the, his nostrils. And the breath of life. And man became a living soul. I wish you were at uh, the well last Sunday. When we talked about. Um, what did we talk about? Avrakadavra. And we looked at, he, at, at this expression. Living soul. I wish you were there. But long and short of it, if you look at the amplified version of um, second of Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, that portion that says a living soul, amplified version of the Bible puts it in brackets and says an individual complete in spirits, in body and in spirits. So when God breathes upon man in preparation for what man will do for him. He made sure that that man was complete both in their body and in their spirit. Do you understand this? God does not use half-baked. Forget it. Don't see. That's why I still don't understand that the only way we pick people who will run churches and pastor parishes is that they are available. And they've been there for years. How can you entrust destinies to somebody that if you said right now open to Malachi, they don't know where to find it in the Bible. Then why we pick them out of the fact that they are available and they are willing. Sometimes we even pick the people who don't have jobs because it means that they can sit down there. No, God picks the best. You must have proven yourself. Even if you were just in potential, he will take you, he will introduce you to you. How do I know? He introduced Jephthah to Jephthah. He introduced David to David by the things that David went through. He introduced Gideon to Gideon. There was another man, Barak. Barak refused to be introduced to himself. He said, no, I will only go if Deborah goes with me. And God said, okay, if you will go only if Deborah goes with you, Deborah will go with you, but I will give this victory into the hands of one that I have prepared. And then we come out and we're complaining, why don't we see? The power that we see anymore. Why would you see power when you send half-baked people? Why do we think that ministry is for half-baked human beings? That's not what it is. So we need to understand that God will take his best. So before he released Adam to say, go and walk, he made sure that Adam was an individual who was complete in body and in spirit. Praise Jesus. So you cannot show... If Adam was not complete in body and in spirit, how did you think Adam called elephant, elephant? And God did not say, no, call it hippo. How did you think that there was no clash when God told Adam, name everything? Because God had finished working, so God was not going to be doing any of that work anymore. So when he brought all the animals that... He had created from day one to day six before Adam, the plants, the trees and everything. He said to Adam, you name them because this is how your work starts. 
but for you to be able to name them i need to breathe over you so that you become an individual who is complete both in body and in spirit i promise you not in my notes so i always encourage people take the holy spirit when you hear him just take him when you hear him but you see man became a living soul before verse 8 and the lord god planted a garden stop giving some level of responsibilities to people you have not spent time to prepare that's why when it was jesus's time before his three years was over he spent time discipling how many people 12. you must be a prepared man to be able to do the work that God has called you to. Now, this does not mean only ministry work. If God called you into business to become a technocrat, you want to make sure that he identifies for you the people who can help you train to become that kind of person. Because if God, I was telling her this morning, that when God entrusts business into your hand, it is not because you need money that he entrusts business into your hand. Because we're having a conversation of someone who's married to a stupendously rich man. So she doesn't need to do business. But she has such a good eye for jewelry. Just for accessories generally. That that was what she was doing as pastime. Now she stopped because, I mean, when you even see her, you know that they're using shovel to carry money in their house. So she doesn't need to do anything. And I was telling her, I said, what that person doesn't recognize is that when God entrusts business with you, it's not because you're hungry that he gives you a business. He gives you a business because your business will build a part of the world. Do you understand it? Your business is a tool for replenishing the earth. And so if God puts that inside of you and says, I've called you to be a business person. I've called you to be a speaker. I've called you to be a coach. I've called you to be a manufacturer. Whatever God has called you to be, you want to make sure that every time you show up, everything you produce is excellent. Because that's, it is those things as you do them that shows that you are a representative of the kingdom. Do you understand it? So God did not put together plant a garden until he knew that adam was complete in spirit and in body it was only after that that he planted a garden eastward in eden and there he put the man whom he had formed i can't say this enough after you receive the god idea that says to you that um pastry that you are supposed to be a pastry chef what's the next thing you should do don't just rely on online recipes train and when you finish training there is another training that the holy spirit trains you where the holy spirit will say to you okay they want to do a poison these are all the uh, um, ingredients that are required but i want to give you your own signature poison so this is something else that you will do that will make your own different from because it's not that i'm a pastry chef that will be the problem everybody is a pastry chef so i mean how many donuts can one person eat but the reason why people will continue to stand in front of you will be because there is something different about what you are producing and sometimes people don't even mind that they pay you for it when they lift it up they will like praise god this person does it so well that i can actually rest in my house and say just send it to me do you understand it but what we have been made to feel like is if you're in business then it's just so that you make money no you are you are as a business person you are a representative of kingdom that's what it means it means that because you are a business person and you're also kingdom what it means is that when you show up they are sure that you did not use expired products because you are representing kingdom do you understand it they are sure that you are not measuring with the wrong skills because you are representing kingdom because you know your bible says be very careful with this case with which you measure right they know that your profit is not crazy 
You're not breaking them down in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the bids to make profit. Why? Because you represent kingdom. Those are the things that make us look different and why people will flock to us. And then on top of that, when they come, when they begin to ask you questions, you say, Jesus. So people will actually come because they want to hear you talk about Jesus more than they need for what it is that you sell. Do you understand it? That's why it is extremely important that we are the ones that know what we are doing. So God did not just say them, okay, go. As you're going, turn left and right and go straight. You will see one garden. Call it a name and then that garden becomes yours. It is your responsibility to know. God made sure that he, God, prepared Adam. So Adam was ready. So that Adam did not need to. The moment they said to him, name the animals, he didn't run back. I said, God, this one has two. God, can you see the picture? Let me send it to you by WhatsApp. He has two ears and one tusk. God, can you see it? What should I'm thinking to call it ant? Uh, do you think ant? God will not say, but ant doesn't sound heavy enough. Call it elephant. Did you see that conversation in your Bible? Somehow, because he was complete, he was an individual that was complete in spirit and in body, God's spirit was resting upon him. So he, his spirit will bear witness, or the spirit of God will bear witness with his spirit. And whatever he needs to say is what comes out. Is this making sense? So let's go on. Verse 8, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, of life also was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was there as well. Can I just encourage you that the thing that will save you is right in the middle of your everyday life. The tree of life was right in the, um, in the midst of all the other trees. Do you know that? They did not put a special, they did not create a special garden for the tree of life. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was thrown right in the midst of all the other trees. We always think that there is a life beyond this life. So we say something like secular and spiritual. They, they are not, they, they, there's no demarcation. It's one life. So if you will not allow the spirit of God to be the, what is powering you, then I have good news. Your secular life will be broken down. It's good news. Hopefully. I don't know whether you get it. We need to stop putting ourselves in boxes. And then you get to one place and you speak and they can never know you are a Christian. Because someone has told you that the language has to be a particular kind of language. Otherwise they will not listen to you. Who told you? Do you recognize that the language of hope that you carry is what most of the richest people are looking for? If you can give them hope, they will buy any other thing from you. So God planted the garden, planted all the trees that were meant for food, and he put the tree of life inside. If you will reach life, you will first of all go through having to look at the guava tree, having to look at the mango tree, having to look at the egbelebo tree, if you know what that means. I'm from Edo State, so I can go. Do you understand it? You will have to go through the tons. You will have to go through the, the ones that have chokes. You have to go through the, 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 the berries that are poisonous to wade your way to get to the tree of life. The way God conform, configured it is you will go through all of that. And in all of that going, you will get into the place where you, you distill experiences that will determine what you will do when you get into the tree of life. The problem was Eve, the serpent took her through a shortcut and landed her right in front of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He didn't let her process her way. Oh my God, looks like I'm pre preaching for this well on Sunday already. So I need to hold it back. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Do you understand it? So God put man there. Then the next thing he puts 
was he not he planted the garden no he prepared man he planted the garden then he put the tree of life right in the garden for those of us who don't want to walk yesterday i posted something i said there's nothing like i'm going to be great on part time no you may do the active work part time but the mental work for greatness is done over time without pay because they've come out now they say just just moonlight just go on whatsapp you know go on whatsapp and say you are you are teaching a class and then to two thousand naira fifty people no sir they just need to come once and if they did not get what they are looking for they will not show up again they will not is this making sense so god god prepared the man planted the garden put life right in the middle of the garden the man had to wait through other things to get to life and then see the next thing in verse 10 and a river went out of eden this is where i want to spend my time today a river went out of eden to water the garden hmm? and from then it was parted and became into how many heads yes. four heads here's the philosophy the principle or the technology i want to give you today one gift is enough for a lifetime one garden is enough for a lifetime because every one garden has in it the capacity to produce in four different ways so if you can cook there's somebody you know that i took through this coaching session and she makes soups and i said to her this is your soup I can give you money in four ways and she was like how and i said to her i don't know how they can give you money in four ways so you need to go back to god and ask him aside from just cooking soups and delivering them how many or which other thing do i need to do ultimately she's on jumia now that's one stream of income that people like me that will not go to jumia will go direct to her and then she will deliver to us what she has on jumia is cheaper because it's for bachelors and people who don't know how to cook who don't know those ones who don't have families then she has one at her office where she has this cooler where people this freezer where young people at the end of the month will just come and buy different soups and take home because that becomes what they eat and then the fourth thing she came back she said i found three now i said there's a fourth one and ultimately we agreed training is your fourth one she said training i said yes she said how i said i don't want to set up a school i said i didn't ask you to set up a school go back and tell god the first day someone walked up to her and said look i see that you have a technology for this thing you are doing i will pay you i don't know how much it was a lot of money for her being the first time to train my wife on how to do it because we want to open something like this in our neighborhood she called me she said sis are you serious i can't believe that this thing everything that god gives you can produce wealth in four ways minimum And I'll prove it to you. I don't just talk. I will prove it to you by the word. Right here in this scripture. I don't need to go anywhere else. And then I will come back and I will prove it to you from my life. So, let's look at the river. Verse 11. The first river is called what? Are you in Genesis 2, 11? What's the first river called? Eden. Okay. So we'll have to find we have to find all the rivers from here today yes we must find the rivers today the first river is called pishon and do you know what pishon means it means spring out or overflow pishon means spring out or overflow praise jesus i will tie it together for you let's just follow me okay what's the second river called okay no let's explain let's see what what surrounds the the, the name of the first is Pishon. that is it which compasses the whole land of havila where what happens where there is gold mm -hmm. eh? and the gold of that land is good and there's something else what else Bellium and the onyx stone where 
and Pishon from the river Pishon. Remember that God caused one river in Eden. So I need you to begin to see your life as Eden right now. Then out of Eden flowed out was the river Pishon. And we can see that Pishon means what? Spring out or overflow. And in springing out and overflow, you can see what it carries with it, right? Let's go to verse number 13. And the name of the second river is what? Gihon. Gihon means bursting forth. Gihon means bursting forth. Praise God. And the same is it that compassed the whole land of Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Do you see that? Yes. And the name of the third river is what? Hedekel. Hedekel means rapid, quick, sharp. Eh? No, the name of the third river is Hedekel. Okay, some people call it, it's also known as Tigris. But the Aramaic word is Hedekel. And that is it which goes toward the east of Assyria. And the fifth river is called Euphrates. And Euphrates means fruitful, break forth, abound. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let me go back a bit and explain something to you. When God called Adam, what did we agree? That God prepared him first, right? Is that what we agreed? Did you see it in your scripture? Then after that, he prepared a garden and he called the garden Eden. Eden, by the way, means life spring. Do you understand this? Somewhere where life only comes out from. Praise Jesus. And now out of Eden, in Eden, he caused one river. But that river now flows out of Eden in four different directions. Do you understand it? It is one river that it flowed out in how many directions? If you notice, because sometimes people mistake it and think that the rivers flow into Eden. No, they flow out of Eden in four different directions. And my coach puts these words together and she called it. She said, she, she did it into a sentence. Overflowing circles of increase, bursting forth with rapid fruitfulness. He took the meaning of the words of the river. She took the meaning of the words of the river. My coach is Anna McCall, by the way. And, she, you know, she, this, um, the wholeness of it, I fleshed out. But this sentence that I'm giving you, because remember again that Pishon means spring out or overflow, right? Yes. Gihon means yes. busting yes. forth, yes. right? Yes. Rapid, uh, Hedical means yes. rapid, yes. quick, sharp. And Euphrates means fruitful break forth abound praise jesus Hallelujah. now i said that all of this form a sentence and the sentence is overflowing i'm going to take it quietly so that you can write it write it down overflowing circles of inf increase overflowing cycles of increase cycles actually not circles cycles overflowing cycles of increase bursting forth with rapid fruitfulness overflowing cycles of increase bursting forth with rapid fruitfulness should I go it one more time should I should I overflowing cycles of increase bursting forth with rapid fruitfulness now let me ask you a question what are you looking for in your life it's not overflowing cycles of increase that burst forth with rapid fruitfulness. So you don't have to finish spending last month's salary and then I have to be waiting until next one because you know last month's salary by the fifth of this month is gone, right? But when you have overflowing cycles of increase, that is, it's not one cycle of increase. They are overflowing. They are one on top of the other, one on top of the other. And the, the, their man, in their manifestation of their reward, they are fast. So you are not waiting. There is a rapidity with the way that they come forth. Yeah. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to challenge you. Take this word. Spend between now and next week. Let the Lord break it down for you. 
in the in real terms of the things that you do let him give, him give you a template and begin to work mm -hmm. on that template and this time next year today is november the 17th in one year come back to me let's have this conversation mm. if this will not be a reality overflowing cycles of increase bursting forth with rapid fruitfulness children of god that's what it is we are not meant to go cap in hand begging anybody sometimes the lord would even because putting together the harvest you will not know before the day comes when you need there's a need that harvest will show forth that's why it is a cycle and it is overflowing and it is bursting forth with rapid fruitfulness that is they never get to your tree and say it was mango mango season and your tree didn't come show forth mango mm -hmm. the year god told me taught me this thing we had a mango tree in my premises at 13b those days that had never produced and then when it produced, it just produced like three. So I told my husband, I said, this is what the Lord is saying about us. He said, so where will we test it? I said, we'll test it with this mango tree. Do you know that from that point, that mango started to produce in three circles yearly? Wow. It's not a big tree. It's just a tiny tree near my town. But it became a mango tree that produced three times every year whether mango is in season or not in season you will get there you will see it's either flowering or there's fruit or it's ripened there was always something happening with that mango tree now we've moved into another my my my, my present premises and what we met there was um plantain and we are testing it out again you cannot get to my house and not see that the plantain at the back of my house have half fruit no matter what time of the year it is in fact so you can't ask me when is plantain season i don't know i shall know that the one at the back of my house always has there's always one tree that is bringing forth a bunch it may not be enough but i'm saying to you that this thing these things can be tested they can be tested now imagine what happened in your life or what will happen in your life if you get it so the moment I, I understood it and I started to look at the things that I do I have one gift I have other gifts but I have one gift that is my best use and it is this use of words it's my best gift I can cook a mean whatever but it takes too much labor to get the food out that's not what I want to be doing every day of my life in fact, at this stage, I'm closing to retiring from cooking. That's the way I'm telling my husband that I need to retire. I don't start for 20 years, they cook. You don't do. You get it? But I still, I, I'm a good cook. But I had to go through an elimination series where my coach took me through a coaching session. And the question she asked was, is this your best use? And by the time she helped me compute, I realized it was not my best use by any stretch of imagination. So Abe said to her, it is additional stream of income. And she said, let's look at what you do. Why can't it bring you four streams of income? So I speak. This week, from Monday to Wednesday, I was working in a corporate setting. And the only, only reason why they called me is, I have other skills that support talking, okay? But the only reason why they support me is because I understand words. That's the only reason why they contracted me to do that job. Do you understand it? It's my use of words. So that's one stream of income. And that particular stream of income, eh, the cycle of that tree is like, it's a long cycle. It's not like maize. It's not every three months. It's not every six months. But when one harvest comes from that tree, it's enough to keep you going for a long time. Do you understand it? That's number one. Then I train. Eh? What am I using? So in training, I can decide that I want to organize my own training. And I've told myself that if I am organizing my training, I will never do below 25,000 naira because I know what value I bring to the table. So if I train five people, 10 people, and I'll take a minimum of 10 people in my class, if I train 10 people for four hours, it's worth something for me. That's the way I, have, I put it together. So I train that. For me, if I would even have the time to push that training, 
it's changed to be buying footwear, to be looking at shoes, to be looking at bag, if you know what I mean. But it's another stream. What's the, the what am I still using? Words. Remember that every gift you have, you have a predominant gift, then you have supporting gifts. Okay? So that's a gift that I have. Worse still. So how many streams have we found so far? Two. Two. Then I teach him. I teach this that I do. I run a ministry. Okay? And then people ask me to come and speak. There was a day that when I go and speak for people, because I was in preparation and I was in training, when you finish, they'll give you one pack of juice. And then they will expect you to, for the next three days, to be sending thank you message for a pack of juice. And I took it because it was my training time. But I know what anonymous I get if and when I get to speak for people now. Do you understand it? That's another string. Then I write books. I write books. And my books are another string that are funny. Because sometimes I will just have the books that are stacked there, nobody's asking for them. Then one person will just come out of the blue and say, I need 300 copies of book. Money comes into your hand that you are not looking for. It is a stream of income. Now, from this book DNA, what I did was I now took the, some of the principles in this book and I did it into what I call a purpose master class. So it becomes another stream. I sat down and I did videos. That if you want to go through Purpose University, all you do is you come to me, you buy the videos. And then you can come back and I'll ask me questions and I will explain them to you. Did you not go through Purpose University? And you go through them. We are looking at five already, right? And there are still many more coming. Do you understand this? All from where? <coughs> One gift. I think my own big challenge is I'm not exactly a business person. So I never push to put frameworks and truck structures around what I do. If I was that, ah, I must get money kind of person. This will be things that run consistently on a monthly basis that I will not lack. But even without doing it that way, for the level at which I'm, I'm at, for the things that are really important, I don't lack for them. It is erroneous. To think that God will create us, put us on the earth, and then we'll say there are times when you should have dry spells. When you begin to act, have dry spells, honestly, go back and look at your relationship with God. Ask yourself, am I still an individual who is complete in body and in spirit? Because as long as you are that person, which means that the channels of your communication with, with God are clear and they are working god is forever looking for ways to get wealth into the hands of his trusted children he doesn't gain anything by letting it dry up now does it give the same amount of wealth to everyone i think that we have the same seed it depends on how we work it out because what we do is we see it says that say we see um we run we say we are running businesses and we say our businesses support kingdom you know that there's a difference between a business that supports kingdom and a kingdom driven business there are two different kinds of business a dangote is a business that we have heard over time supports kingdom do you understand it shows up a church is getting something done and decides to give them cement it is a business that supports kingdom. It is not a kingdom-driven business. What's the difference? The kingdom-driven business is built on principles of the kingdom. Do you understand it? Now, the reason why we don't see a lot of wealth in church is because we are running our businesses like businesses that support kingdom. We are not running them like kingdom driven businesses because when your business is kingdom driven it's god that will give you the idea he's the one that will tell you where to locate it he's the one that will tell you when to come out of your house he's the one that will say to you this business every day when you people come spend one hour praying in tongues first so the template will come directly from heaven on how to run it 
that is a kingdom driven business that business doesn't have bottom line that is its, its own that business from start to finish is run by god do you understand it which means that he, if he's the owner because a kingdom driven business means that kingdom owns it is that he can show up one january and say shut it down i want you to go to somewhere and go and do mission work for this time shut this one down this is not the one we're doing this year and you will not feel like something is wrong you will quickly shut it down and you will go off to go and do what he's asking you to do until that cycle of you know um sending forth of you expires and he brings you back kingdom driven so what we do and why we struggle why it looks like these streams are not working because some people have actually identified them they may not know he came out of genesis but they'll be able to compartmentalize their gift into at least four different ways of earning but the reason why you're not seeing the abundance is that your business supports kingdom it is not driven by kingdom I actually think we can close today isn't this a lot enough to chew on so someone will say okay what about those of us who don't run businesses your gift can still end for you in four different ways whether you work for people or not you just have to because when part of what you got in genesis chapter 2 verse 7 when god breathed upon you was he gave you his creative ability what you just need to do is activate that creativity that genius i call it the genius of god activate it inside of you so that that begins to break from you for you different things you know the funny thing i don't know whether it's funny or sad you see this principle unbelievers know it more And even as I'm teaching it, one person will take it and now make it a money-spinning venture for them. That's the problem with us. But in this scripture, from Gen see, everything that God wanted to do with us, from the beginning of Gen Genesis chapter 1 to 3 is there. Every single thing on marriage, on how to run your farm, everything is there. If we just follow these templates, our lives will be easy. The reason why we struggle is because we don't follow okay no okay well let's say we are ignorant of the templates or we know the templates we just don't know how to flesh it out praise the lord so overflowing cycles of increase but uh, cycles of increase busting off thoughts with what rapid fruitfulness if i were you i would go home i would write it i would paste it somewhere on my wardrobe I will continue to say it every morning. I'll continue to pray over it until the Lord breaks it down. Because I can't break it down in, in the language for each one of you. Because I am not exactly in your DNA, which is your eating. I can't tell what exactly you have. Unless, okay, we decide, that, okay, we will take through, uh, go through like maybe coaching sessions. Then we will now begin to look out to you. But in this class, I can't do that. But if you will sit down and look at it, mommy, you will be amazed what God is putting in your hand. The potential of what God has given you. Praise Jesus. I truly feel like we should stop. But let's go on. Verse 15. It was only after this river has started to flow. Because God didn't want Adam to say, Euphrates dried up, that's why the trees died. God didn't want Adam to say, oh, Hedekel had a uh, spiral gyra on it, so because of that, we can't use it anymore to cook. Because as long as there are rivers like this, even though they are coming from the sun source, their flow will not be the same pace. You know that, right? So this is done so that there will always be something in the life of the child of God that doesn't make him cross over to ask the devil for stuff. But think about it now. How many times we cross to ask the devil for stuff because what we had dried up. So it was only after that.
Per seven, God, pre God prepared the man, made sure he was complete in body and in spirit. Verse eight, he planted the garden. Verse number now, nine, he put all the trees inside of that garden with life and knowledge of good and evil right inside of that garden as well. Now make sure that the garden has the capacity to produce in four different directions. Before in verse 15, look at it. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Our God never puts the cart before the horse. If you are thinking strategy, think heaven. You also need to begin to look at your own self and say everything. We've said, we said this in the first two or three classes. That everything I need for my greatness is in my environment. So when you decide that when you go to America is where? Your deliverance is. And nobody from heaven told you that you should go to America. What do you think happens ultimately? The day they will repatriate you from the street. Even the four t-shirts you were able to buy, you won't be able to go home to get them. Don't you know how many of them they sent back home? Who were here actually making a headway before they sold everything they had to buy a plane ticket. And then they go there room for five years, ten years, and they do nothing. And one day they are grabbed from the streets and they are sent back. What do you think happens? They come back and they go back to the beginning before they sold. Because if God planted you here and you exported yourself to heaven, they will send you back to earth. Otherwise, you can't produce this cycle that we're talking about. That's why you must never do because the next person to do it, the hype is pure water. Everybody's selling pure water. You too. pure water. I can't be there for you. What every other person is selling and looks like so easy. You will sell, eh? That's the day you know that some things are cost because it wasn't meant for, for you. you. Are you where you are planted? Is this your eating? Last week we said something that, you know, Uncle pushed that. He said, he asked me, he said, do you know what you just said? And really I didn't know. So after I said it, uh, on, I've been, since that one week, I've been thinking about it. Because some of these things are just dropping because the Holy Spirit is talking. And what was it I said? I said, when you want to, when you are in ignorance and you want to grow, you don't go to, you don't go to, finished products you go to process processing plants a lot of us are running to finished products that's the way they do it so shortcut boom you are there not realizing that what makes you an expert is not that you can couple this microphone together what makes you an expert is that in coupling this microphone together you know what to put where so that when you know, it's windy because this is what we call a dynamic mic. It can get the noise in the surround, but it also is, it's also a condenser mic that can keep away extraneous noise that has nothing to do with what we're doing. Do you understand it? So it's not I've been watching uh, Oin put to couple the microphone together, not be coupling, I feel coupler. When you finish coupling, it's when I speak to it, it goes, wow, everybody's screaming. What's the difference? It's not that just knowing the wire. It's just recognizing that even after you've plucked what into what, there is a frequency that these things work in. And what we look for, or what processing plants do for us, is they empower us to recognize the frequency and to master the frequencies. Do you understand what I'm saying? This that we are learning today, this that we are learning today, is to master the frequency of wealth. It's not just to make money. Because if you don't master this frequency, after a while, you will go back to not doing the things that you do. And therefore, it will not produce what it's supposed to produce. Does this make sense? Welcome. 
Do you understand it? This is what we are dealing with. And these are the things we must know for us. Again, I can't begin to tell you how many people. I said, let me teach your church. I'll come and teach. I didn't even say teach your church. Teach your workers. Because the idea is, if I teach your workers, because your workers are the ones that are tight, your tights will increase. But I'm seated here and I can boldly say it. Nobody, somebody actually told me, he said, he said, teach me so that I can go and teach them. And I was like, okay, I'll get back to you. These are the dynamics of our lives. Commonplace things that look hidden because we're not looking through the right set of glasses. Everything that you hustle for, wake up at 3 a.m., go to bed at 12 midnight, is to have overflowing cycles of increase, busting forth with rapid fruitfulness. Are they alive? Yes, sir. Yeah. When the Bible says money answereth all things, it's overflowing cycles of increase, busting forth with rapid fruitfulness. But if you don't know how to work it out, if you don't understand the frequency, one river, that's why a lot of us face one river. And after a while, when it's Hamatan, that river is not receiving, then it becomes a problem. Or it's receiving because your output is also a lot. You have that one stream, but it's not enough to feed your, feed your output. Somebody will now say to you, just do it like this. You are crossing over. So devil territory, you just don't recognize it yet. I saw in Exodus that when they wanted to build the tabernacle, God said to Moses, tell the people, only those who are willing should bring, which tells me that some people did not bring because they were not willing. And the Bible records that at, I think it was uh, chapter 35 of Exodus, they brought so much that Moses had to tell to them, stop. The people that were building said, we had too much material. So Moses said to the people who were bringing, he said, don't bring any more. Do you think those people were in lack for them to have brought that much? They were not in lack. Whoever coined the expression, church rats, was a very wicked person. He was working with our minds. He was attacking our mindsets. We just didn't know it. So we too, we started to talk about it. I am still yet to hear the expression, mouse rat. I've been mosque rat. I've not heard it. I've been, I don't hear an amino no. I've never heard it, but have you heard church rat? In every nation, they have the equivalent of the expression church rat. What happened? Because when they keep us there, in our mind, not recognizing the things that you know that God has provided for our salvation, then the devil can come on our turf and dance balogo. I pray as God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, we've come to the end of today's class. I can't even try to go on. Because next week we're going to look at what are we even going to look at? Oh, we should go on, right? Let's stop at this. We should stop. What do you guys think? Stop now. Let's stop. Let's stop. So that we can have conversations. Let's stop. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for joining today's class. We're done. If you have questions, I imagine that you should have questions. But whether you're willing to ask them or not is now not my... I don't know. But if you have questions, I'd love to answer them. You can send me an inbox. Because God... The Bible says in Todd John, it says... Um, it is my wish above all things that thou prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. In Jeremiah 29, it says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. God wants the best for us. But he's not, no longer working, so he's not building anything anymore. Everything that he needs for us to, that pertains to life and godliness, he's already given to us. What I tried to do today was to open your eyes to the fact that you are a potential wealthy man sitting on your family. And what I'm asking to you to do today is get up, 
recognize the things that God has put in your hands and work them out. Yes, I agree that sometimes you need a tutor and sometimes you need a governance. And I'll gladly tutor you and govern you. But that's a separate conversation if you want that. However, at least now you know that God called you to overflowing cycles of increase, bursting forth with rapid fruitfulness. And it is not a prosperity message, please. It is who you are. You can choose that I will see this increase or you can choose that I will not see them. But it does not negate the fact that that is your journey. It does not in any way negate the fact that that is what God has put you on earth to do. My prayer is that you would, your hands will touch the things that your eyes are seeing today. And when all is said and done, you will be the best version, if there is anything like that, of yourself. And heaven will be proud of you in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining the class. God bless you. My name is Bidemi Mahmoudi. You can share this video if you feel that you have friends who should um, listen or watch it. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.